think of the divine lord in our hearts and pray for the welfare of all the beings in the universe shanti 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 peace 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 be unto all om स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय हसतो मसदमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय हसतो मसदमय तमसो ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मृतंगमय ओ शाति 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 लेटस ऑफर अवर सेल्युटेशन्स to sri ramakrishna the embodiment of infinite religious ideas the integrator of all the religions in the world who established dharma on the right track let us pray to him to lead us from unreal to the real from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge from death to immortality let us pray to him to remove all obstructions on our way and let him grant peace to the whole humanity भद्रंकर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्र पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिरंगुवागुंसस्तनो व्यसेम देवितयदायु स्वस्ति नगिंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति नूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नस्ताक्षने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पति दधा ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ may we hear what is auspicious with our ears may we see what is auspicious with our eyes may we enjoy the life allotted to us in a righteous way may all the gods bestow prosperity on us may the gods remove all obstructions in our path may the gods bestow prosperity on us peace 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 be unto all now let us chant this amrita bindu upanishad manohit vividham proktam shuddham cha shuddham eva cha अशुद्ध काम संकल्प शुद्ध काम विवर्जित मन मनुष्याण कारण बंधमोक्ष बंधा विषयासक्त मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत 
ಯಶಯ ಸನಸೋ ಮುಕ್ತಿರಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಅಥವಿಷಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ಮನ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಮುಕ್ಷು ನಿರಸ್ತವಿಷಯ ಸಂಗಂ ಸನ್ನಿರುದ್ಧ ಮನೋಹೃದಿ ಯಾತ್ಮನೋಭಾವ ತದಾತ್ಪರಮ ಪದ ತಾವದೇವ ನಿರೋಧ್ಯ ಯಾವೃದಿ ಗತಕ್ಷಯ ಏತಜ್ಞಾನಚ್ಯಾನೇಷೋ ನ್ಯಾಯಶ್ಚ ವಿಸ್ತರ ನೈವ ಚಿಂತನ್ನ ಚಾಚಿತ್ಯ ನ ಚಿಂತನ್ ಚಿಂತ್ಯಮೇವ ತತ್ ಪಕ್ಷಪಾತ ವಿರ್ಮುಕ್ತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಂಪದ್ಯತೆ ತದೇಣ ಸಂಧೋಗ ಅಸ್ವರ ಭಾವೇತ್ಪರಂ ಅಸ್ವರೇಣಾನುಭಾವೇನ ಭಾವೋ ವಾ ಭಾವಯಿಷ್ಯತೆ ತದೇವ ನಿಷ್ಕಲ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪನಿರಂಜನ ತದ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಿತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಂಪದ್ಯತೆ ಧ್ರುವ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪಮನಂತೃಷ್ಟಾಂತವರ್ಜಿತ ಅಪ್ರಮೇಯಮನಾಚ್ಯತೆ ಬುಧ ನ ನಿರೋಧೋ ನ ಚೋತ್ಪತ್ತಿ ನ ಬದ್ಧೋ ನ ಚಾಧಕ ನ ಮುಕ್ಷರ್ನ ವೈ ಮುಕ್ತ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮಂತವ್ಯೋ ಜಾಗ್ರತ್ ಸ್ವಪ್ನ ಸುಷುಪ್ತಿಷು ಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯವ್ಯತೀತ ಪುನಜನ್ಮನ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ಹಿ ಭೂತಾತ್ಮ ಭೂತೆ ಭೂತೆ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತ ಬಹುಧಾ ಚೈವ ದೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಜಲಚಂದ್ರವತ್ ಘಟಸಂವ್ರತಮಾಕಾಶಂ ನೀಯಮೇ ಘಟೇಯ ಘಟೋನೀಯೇತನಾಕಾಶಂ ತೀವೋ ನ ಭೋಪಮ ಘಟವದ್ವಿಧಾಕಾರ ಭಿಧ್ಯಮಾನ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ತದ್ಭಗ್ನನ್ನ ಚಾತಿ ಸಾತಿ ಚಿತ್ಯಶ ಶಬ್ದಮೃತೋನೈವ ತಮಸಾತಿ ಪುಷ್ಕರೆ ಭಿನ್ನೇ ತಮಸಿ ಚೈಕತ್ವ ಏಕೇವಾನುಪಶ್ಯತಿ ಶಬ್ದಾಕ್ಷರ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಣೆ ಯದಕ್ಷರ ತದ್ವಿದ್ವಾನಕ್ಷರನ್ ಧ್ಯಾಚ್ಛಾಂತಿ ಮಾತ್ಮನ ದ್ವೇ ವಿದ್ಯೆ ವೇದಿತೇತ ಶಬ್ದಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪರಂಚಯತ್ ಶಬ್ದಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ನಿಷ್ಣಾತ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಧಿಗತಿ ಗ್ರಂಥಮಭ್ಯಸ್ಯ ಮೇಧಾವಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ತತ್ಪರ ಫಲಾಲಮಿವಧಾನ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ತ್ಯಜೇತ್ ಗ್ರಂಥಮಶೇಷದ ಗವಾಮನೇಕವರ್ಣ ಕ್ಷೀರಸ್ಯಾಪ್ಯೇಕವರ್ಣತ ಕ್ಷೀರವತ್ ಪಶ್ಯತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಲಿಂಗಿನಸ್ತು ಗವಾಯಥಿವ ಪಯಸಿ ನಿಗೂಢಂ ಭೂತೆ ಭೂತೆ ವಸತಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಸತತ ಮಂಥಯಿತವ್ಯಂ 
ಮನಸಮಂಥಾನೂತೇನ ಜ್ಞಾನನೇತ್ರ ಸಮರೇವತ್ಪರ ನಿಷ್ಕಲ ನಿಶ್ಚಲ ಶಾಂತ ತದ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಿತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತ ಸರ್ವೂತಾಧಿವಾಸಯ ಭೂತು ಚ ವಸತ್ಯಿ ಸರ್ವಾಹಕ ತದಸ್ಮ್ಯಹಂ ವಾಸುದೇವಸ್ತದಸ್ಮ್ಯಹಂ ವಾಸುದೇವ ಇದು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಹೌ ಒನ್ಸ್ ದ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ is realized then he doesn't feel that he is bound he doesn't have any idea of bondage or freedom he is well established in that highest experience of bliss where he is one with the infinite spirit in explaining this i gave an analogy of a mirror suppose we take a mirror and put it in front of us we see our form there now the image in the mirror has no real existence it is a mere appearance for only the pure colorless mirror exists but when we look at the mirror when we concentrate our attention on the mirror only we do not see the glass where our form is reflected but in our form which is reflected in the mirror as well as outside it is there anything except the colorless mirror similarly the body the mind etc they have no real existence they appear to be real it's only by being superimposed on the atman they appear to exist so when we realize that highest brahman the whole world which was looking as real immediately becomes unreal the world as the world doesn't exist but the world as the supreme brahman exists that is the point in the verse number 11 ek evatma mantavyo jagrat swapna sushuptishu sthanatraya vyatitasya punajjanma navidyate here three states are mentioned jagrat waking state we are all in the waking state having wonderful experience of this world then swapna that is dream state there also we have various experiences the third state is sushupti dreamless sleep deep sleep where there is no dream at all there we enjoy immense peace these are the three states mentioned in this verse verse 
through all these states the atman pervades it is the same atman experiencing various experiences in all these three different states we should not make a mistake that atman in the waking state experiencing in the waking state is different from the atman experience in the in the dream state and the atman experiencing in the deep sleep state it is not like that it is the same atman experiencing all these types of different experiences in all these three states now when the being transcends these three states when he is able to rise above the waking state dream state and dreamless sleep state when he is able to establish himself in that highest state above all these three states then he has no more rebirth that means he attains immortality the whole truth is revealed and he is immensely pleased with that realization and he laughs over it hitherto he had all types of ups and downs in life but now no more such modifications he is completely satisfied with the highest peace and bliss now what is this atman that we should know very very clearly it is the self luminous witness of intellect the ego consciousness in every one that is called that is referred to as atman in this verse it is mentioned three states of consciousness one is the waking state in which consciousness is identified with the physical body and we are conscious of this physical world so we become aware of this waking state the second state is called dream state in which the consciousness is identified with the subtle body and we live in the dream world created by our own mental impressions there is a third state called dreamless sleep state that is the deep sleep state in which the consciousness is identified with the causal body karana sharira we call it in sanskrit which is in tune with a causal world there the mind ceases to function it is this identification that we should not causes all troubles and covers our true nature of atman which is pure ever free and non different from brahman so the problem lies here where in our identification the more we are identified with the wakeful state the more we are far away from the real truth we are hugging the apparent truth so we are not experiencing the real peace when we are identified with the physical body we then think we are short we are tall we are young we are old we are fair we are dark etc etc when we identify ourselves with the mind 
we experience pain, pleasure, misery and all such things. When identified with ego, we think, I am the doer, I am bound that way. That means, this identification has hypnotized us into these different states and so we are constantly in trouble. We may have lot of wealth, we may have possessed many things of this world, yet we are not having happiness. It is because of this hypnosis. We are all under the spell of hypnosis. We must therefore get ourselves dehypnotized to realize our true spiritual nature. As long as we are under this hypnosis, the unreal seems to be real. It is how to do away with this. It is done through holy association. That is why satsang is always stressed upon. We must be constantly in touch with holy people. We must follow their in instructions meticulously. That is the way of dehypnotizing ourselves And they say we must form good moral habits and guide our thoughts, emotions and actions by the spiritual ideal to break all old bad habits of thinking, feeling and acting. How many of us are really careful about these things? We just not giving any attention to this type of training at all. Once we get ourselves trained, as a result of moral disciplines, prayers, meditations, repetition of the divine name, the mind becomes pure and we develop the power of introspection. That is very important. Without developing that faculty, it would be impossible for us to rise beyond these three states. Then there would be a real spiritual unfoldment. When the power of introspection is well developed, well cultivated, under the holy association, following the instructions of them, the real spiritual unfoldment takes place. Every moment of our life is a moment of choice between the true and the false. We must be wide awake and keep the fire of discrimination always bright in our heart. No event, no thought should escape our notice. When we give attention to all these aspects, this whole universe would be a great book of knowledge. The study of illumined souls inspire us about this truth. Sometimes the doubts may come to us. Is it ever possible to withdraw our identification with the body? We may like to withdraw, but in practice it is not possible. Probably it may be simply a talk. Such kind of doubts may arise, but then 
there are the lives of great men who validate these truths it is possible to withdraw consciousness from the waking state at the same time be fully aware of the things going on swami turiyananda ji one of the direct disciples of sri ramakrishna how he could disidentify himself with his body in the waking state and remain calm and steady in his atman consciousness there is an instance in his life which happened in banaras in the year 1921 swami ji was suffering with pain on account of a large painful boil under the skin on his back it was so painful the doctors came examined him and they decided upon to operate that boil now swami turiyananda ji refused to take any anesthetic instead he told the doctors that he would detach himself from the body then they could operate upon let them take any time whatever time they needed they can take the time everyone was amazed at his calmness during the painful operation he never murmured a word with full awareness he watched the operation as if he is seeing the operation through the mirror the wound was bandaged next day the doctor came to inspect the incision he found that a little more infected tissue should have to be removed so without giving proper notice to swami turiyananda he was just examining his uh, boil and then immediately he decided upon to remove that extra tissue so what he did was he took he had brought pair of scissors he cut hold of the flesh in order to cut off instantly the swami cried out in terrible pain and shuddered later on somebody asked him why he showed such distress the second day when he had permitted a far more painful treatment without any reaction the first day the swami explained that on the first day he had been aware that he felt the pain of the body so it was very easy for him just if he wanted he could withdraw the mind it only shows why we are suffering it is simply because of our identification call it identification or call it attachment whatever the word you may use so that is the wonderful experience how it is possible to withdraw the mind from the waking state to get rid of all types of miseries in this world there is another instance in swami turiyananda's life he was preparing himself to withdraw his mind completely from the world he found he has lived enough and no more he would be living one day he called one of his attendants and said my boy you will see that i will soon leave this world in 3 months what he said was true he left his mortal body exactly 3 months later 
the atman which experiences pain or pleasure an account of its identification with body and things in the waking state the same atman experiences dreams in dream state there are several types of dreams it's actually the soul enjoying in the dream world this is the waking world that is the dream world that's also a world some have no meaning but some dreams are reflections of our desires while some have higher spiritual value some dreams refer to the past even to our past lives some dreams refer to the future probably you might have read abraham lincoln's life there it is stated he had a vivid dream of his own death by assassination and told others about it some of the dreams reveal our hidden desires and complexes many dreams are symbolic they are to be properly interpreted now these dreams they are also profitable as far as we are concerned about the knowledge of atman it is profitable to study one's own dream and gain some insight into the workings of one's own mind if we examine our dreams we find a new side of our personality we are not as good as we had thought ourselves to be some dreams reveal awful sides of our personality but we should not be frightened over these facts we should have proper discrimination we should analyze it properly and understand the thing truth about ourselves should make us stronger and more determined to overcome our defects that way they are useful to us often dreams come from a deeper layer of consciousness swami atishwarananda ji in his uh, book meditation and spiritual life dealing with this subject he gives the example of the great 19th century german chemist kekule who discovered the structure of benzene in a dream one night he saw several structural formulae wriggling before his eyes in his dream suddenly he noticed that some of them were connected in a closed ring like two snakes trying to swallow each other he woke up and worked out the ring structure of benzene and the theory of resonance some dreams speak of the soul's deep spiritual aspirations in giving this experience swami ateshwarananda ji himself tells about his dream once he had a dream in the dream swami ateshwarananda ji wrote a letter to his guru swami brahmananda ji which we are having here in the chapel he wrote in that letter that he was trying to see the divine in all in the same dream the guru wrote back to yatishwarananda to try to see the whole in every part to try to see the infinite in every finite thing see how the dreams work out spiritually also then there are spiritual dreams in which great spiritual truths are revealed some do get a mantra in dreams and some get an ecstatic vision that's also possible 
it should be noted that the presence of atman causes the dreamer to see dreams atman is present in all these three states same atman is present that's what this verse says in brahmaranik upanishad there is a remarkable discussion about this inner light once the great sage yagyavalkya was present in the court of king janaka the king put to him many questions about the light by which man works and sees things yagyavalkya the illumined sage gave appropriate answers he said first the sun acted as light for man when the sun had set the moon when the moon had also set the fire and when the fire was put out the sound these successfully acted as lights for man the king again asked then after the sun and the moon have both set fire has gone out and the sound is hushed what serves as light for a man then the great sage replied the self indeed serves as his light the other lights are external ones and can help a man only in his waking state but during dream and deep sleep states it is the light of the self by which man knows and enjoys himself it is not illumined by anything but it illumines everything else in the state of spiritual illumination this light shines alone all by itself when once this ever shining light is realized then he has attained immortality the same atman is present in deep sleep or dreamless sleep state this is the third state which i am taking up now this brahmaranik upanishad deals with this subject also what are the experiences in this state after having had enjoyment in this state of waking after having roamed about and seen good and evil the soul roams about in dream state there also he experiences many things good bad everything then it gets back to deep sleep state which is perfectly serene and unattached an example of eagle is given it flies around this in the sky for a long time then it becomes exhausted it folds its wings and returns to its nest even so the person after roaming back and forth waking and dream states again and again going coming going coming finally it returns to deep sleep state to enjoy immense peace and joy that is everyone's experience suppose you had a very good sleep having no dreams at all you won't find the whole night passing away like a few seconds you will have enjoyed immense joy that experience you will feel after waking up what is the reason the reason is in this deep sleep state he desires no desires sees no dream in this deep sleep state the upanishad says a father ceases to be a father a mother ceases to be a mother a murderer ceases to be a murderer a recluse ceases to be a recluse so on and so forth in that state one does not see hear taste talk or listen because for all these activities a second object is necessary but in deep sleep 
the individual soul becomes one with the infinite supreme consciousness and experiences pure bliss there is then one undivided consciousness like a vast expanse of water this condition is the nearest approximation to the state of liberation but there is a vast difference between the two the individual self undoubtedly enjoys pure happiness during deep sleep state but nevertheless it is in bondage and ignorance when it comes out of sleep it becomes the old self again and experiences all the old sorrows and limitations we must get the experience of deep sleep consciously consciously we must get into that state once swami premananda one of the direct disciples of sri ramakrishna he was meditating in belur math for a long time in front of the shrine deeply he was absorbed and he was completely in wrong a new brahmacharin he couldn't understand he saw the swami sitting there closing his eyes for a long time swami is sitting there he thought swami ji might be sleeping for he came and tried to wake him up but he was not successful after a long time the swami himself came back to normal consciousness then this brahmacharin asked him whether he was sleeping then the swami ji replied oh my boy i have put my sleep to sleep i have put my sleep to sleep that was the answer the swami transcended himself above waking dream and dreamless sleep sleep states and remained in that high super conscious state for a long time actually he didn't want to come down at all but then he had a mission to fulfill so by the power of the divine will he came to normal consciousness swami turiyanand ji also tells his experience of how he conquered sleep he started to observe sleep having hushed all his thoughts when he was about to fall asleep he kept awake by his will power practicing thus he found that sleep had dwindled and there was only a very thin partition separating him from brahman he had reached the threshold of super consciousness when one transcends waking dream and dreamless sleep states and establishes his unity with the supreme consciousness then there is no more rebirth for such an illumined person he is fully aware of this blissful experience once he became aware of this experience he is no more under ignorance any longer in his notes of class talks and lectures swami vivekananda tells one incident about a yogi whom he had met he had this highest type of highest state of realization so he could see everything as the veritable manifestations of the paramatman he was a old man swami vivekananda had seen him he lived in a cave all by himself he had only two vessels with him for cooking his meals he ate very little or scarcely anything he spent most of his time in meditation he was seeing everything as the very embodiment of paramatma persons animals all were the divine manifestations he would look all these things that way he had attained to non injuring one day a thief entered he escaped he saw the yogi was sitting in meditation closing his eyes immediately he stole one of the vessels and went outside the cave as quickly as he had entered the yogi had just concluded his meditation 
he saw the thief going out with the vessel what did he do the yogi ran after him chased him literally after a long time the thief could not run further because of exhaustion he stopped this yogi running up to him fell on his knees before him and said my lord he is addressing the thief as a lord oh my lord you have come to my cave it's a great honor to me do me the honor to accept the other vessel also he had two vessels you know one vessel he had stolen he has given the he is giving the other vessel also he says it is also yours this yogi was full of love for everything in the world wild animals instinctively knew this old man to be their friend snakes and ferocious animals they all would go to his cave and sleep with him they all loved him and never fought in his presence they were all peaceful even the wild animals they were not quarreling with each other they were all peaceful in his presence so that is the experience of the one who had realized the highest truth as long as we have not transcended these three states that is waking state dream state and dreamless sleep state we remain conditioned by ignorance passing through the cycle of births and deaths vedanta appreciates our claim of this reality caused by our ignorance vedanta further appeals to us to rise above our ignorance and to recognize the absolute reality brahman which is the substratum of all these states when we realize brahman we will at once understand the transient and illusory nature of these states it is like a dreamer waking up from his dream this phenomenon is compared to the illusion of silver in an oyster shell often on a moonlit night the oyster shells scattered along a beach produce an illusion of silver the illusion lasts as long as the oyster shell is not recognized when the real nature of the shell is seen the imaginary silver vanishes instantly the silver confirms the existence of the shell the shell is the substratum upon which the silver is superimposed without the shell the illusion cannot arise likewise brahman is a substratum upon which the pluralistic world is superimposed without brahman the illusion of the world cannot arise the world only confirms the existence of the supreme brahman adhisthanam in sanskrit it means substratum it refers to brahman the unseen brahman lends an appearance of reality to an illusion founded upon it when brahman is seen the illusion vanishes similarly the unseen shell is the foundation for the illusory silver when the shell is seen the illusion disappears the shell is said to be the adhisthanam of the silver adhisthanam is also defined as a substratum from which everything arises in which everything exists and into which everything finally merges back that is called adhisthanam for example the ocean is considered as adhisthanam of the waves the waves arise from the ocean exist in the ocean and merge back into the ocean similarly the pluralistic phenomena of the world are said to arise from exist in and merge into the non dual brahman so brahman is the adhisthanam of the world this is the highest truth one who has realized this has attained immortality he is completely free from rebirth again